Hi, my name is Joanne. Welcome to Gallery Bites. I'm here at the Crocker Museum with my two classmates from, from, <laughs> from, my, uh, from our docent training program, Jim and Catherine. We're so happy that you are here to join us today. Uh, the museum is closed, but we are keeping safe and keeping our distance and having our masks in hand, but we are so happy that you're here to join us. We are gonna today talk about our docent training experience. We are part of the class of 2020, 2021, the first inaugural class, 100% um, virtual online learning. We were uh, guinea pigs, I guess you could say. <laughs> So we're going to talk a little bit about our experience, what that was like, um, and then we're also afterwards going to talk about the piece behind us. Um, but first, let me share with you uh, what my docent experience was like. So I don't have any formal training in art education at all. So, but I really enjoy art. I really enjoy being in a space where you could sit and think and wonder and explore. And this uh, aspect was something that I really uh, missed because I am a scientist uh, in my career and I don't really get a chance to do that on a daily basis. So I thought, what a great opportunity. And when the training program came, it comes up every other year. So it's not offered every year, so I knew that if I missed this opportunity, I would have to wait. Um, I, we were in the midst of COVID. We were already a couple months into so being sequestered, and I was in dire need of some camaraderie, some art camaraderie. And I joined. I was a little bit scared and daunted because I figured everybody knew everything about art except for me. Um, but I participated, we learned about Crocker history, we learned about um, all of the collections, European collection, uh, old uh, American art collection, pieces that I were, was totally unfamiliar with, but it was such a mind-blowing experience. It was fast-paced, completely online, but because it was online and we didn't have any other interaction, I got really close to my classmates. They were my friends, uh, during this pandemic, and we were able to escape, and it was wonderful. And so now, after 12 months, we've just completed our final tour, and we're about to graduate, and they've asked us to uh, talk about our experience. Um, and so now I'm going to go ahead and bring on Jim, who will talk about his experience. Come on, Jim. Thank you, Joanne. So yes, that, that was a wonderful story. My excuse, my <laughs> wonderful reason for being uh, a docent now, which I'm so pleased about, is that I used to be an architect and more recently a graphic designer. So I'm very interested in how things look. And of course, this museum is filled with beautiful things. And, but more than that, I'm learning. This is another thing that's great about our training program because it has taught us how to see art and how to appreciate the meaning of art, even if it's not what the artist intended, but it, it's, it just, just brings more, more to it. You're not just looking at a thing. So uh, that's what this training program has done for us and that is how, why being a docent is so fulfilling. And I get to share that fulfillment and share that discovery now to you when you come to visit the museum or when you see us online for one of our gallery talks. Uh, so I'll also, I wanted to share that one of the things I especially feel so lucky about being at the Crocker, because they have um, a kind of a cutting edge way of, of uh, talking about art, is because what we feel, what, we, what memories that come to us when we see art, that's ours. That, that's, that's nothing wrong with that. There's no wrong way to feel about art, even if the, that's not what the artist intended. So we want to really, uh, f you know, make you feel comfortable when you uh, have that reaction, whatever it may be, whenever you come to the Crocker. Ka uh, Catherine, you're next. Thanks. Hello there. 
I'm Catherine, and I'm also a docent, a guide who gets to be with you today, today virtually, and hopefully in the near future in person. Why did I become a docent? Well, all the reasons we heard from Joanne and Jim, they apply to me as well. But um, I'll give you a, maybe a slightly different slant on things. I'm already a docent in San Francisco, and I loved it. So when the opportunity came to be a docent at the Crocker, I leapt at it, and I was thrilled when I was chosen for the class because I love this museum. If you've been to the museum, you know how beautiful it is. And if you haven't, you'll have to come see it with your, with your parents because it is a tremendous space. Now, in terms of being a guide, here's some things that they didn't mention that I kind of enjoy. Today, for example, the museum is closed and I got to come in through the loading deck. Now, this might seem superficial to you, but every time I do it, it's very exciting. I ring the bell, they let me in, I show my badge, they write my name down, and I get to come into the empty museum. And it feels special every single time. The other thing that I love about being a docent is it's given me a special relationship with a lot of the artworks here because I've had the opportunity to look at them in depth and look at them slowly. And also, as you grow, grow older and become teenagers, adults, and continue to come to the museum, the art will be different for you every single time because you are different. The art stays the same, but we change and we interpret it in different ways. And as Jim said, the art is here for you and you can come here and have an experience with it. And that's what we're here for, to help you have a genuine, authentic experience with the art. So I hope we have some fun today with Portrait of My Father. So this is us. And so now what we're going to do is talk a little bit about the picture behind us. This is by Stephen Kaltenbach, and it's called Portrait of My Father. So we're going to kind of start a little bit just from the, from the beginning. So let's start about um, what, what are we seeing here? It's, it's huge. It's huge. Let me, I'm going to step back just for a minute to show you how big this is. This is huge. And so this is um, about uh, 9 by 14, about, give or take a few and half inches. And so this is like, a, like they say, the barn door size, about the size of two car garage a door. It's huge. Imagine your driveway, and if you have a single car, double it. <laughs> so just the enormous size of it, you, you probably can't, can't, uh, can't fathom. But it, once you come into the museum, you're going you're gonna to sit down. There's usually a bench that's here, and you're going to sit, and you're going to take it in as a whole. And when you do that, what do we see? What is the image that we see here? If you have any comments, please share them on your chat, because we want to have a conversation. We want you involved in this process. Um, and as docents, usually when you're here, we're having a conversation. We're going to do the best we can with that. But in the meantime, I'll talk you through it, too. We will talk you through it. So what do we see here? We see a picture almost. It's a person. And um, the artist had drawn or painted his father, because it's called Portrait of My Father. And what, what do we see? We see the, the head. Do we see the head? And what else do we see within that? We see, you know, what's he doing? Is there, is there a position you think he, he's in? Is he, is he, do you think he could be sitting or lying down? He looks like he's lying down. The story is that um, the artist's father had suffered multiple strokes. Uh, he had uh, become bedridden, and he was given a picture by his sister of his father. And he loved his father so much, you know? So um, he admired him and thought that he was very kind. And you could kind of see that a bit, you know, when you're, when you're here in its presence. There are some other things that kind of, when you get a bit closer, because, you know, when, when you first take a look at it, you're a little bit 
further apart, further away, and then when you come in to get a little bit closer, you can see other bits and pieces. What makeup, like how has the artist shown the hair? You could think about all of these random lines, thin lines, maybe thick lines. Where do you see those thinner lines and the thicker lines? Let's take a look really quickly up there in the uh, forehead area and the brows, eyebrows. You could see a little bit, where do you see the lines? How has the artist put together the lines, the thick lines of the, of the forehead? You know, and when I see these lines, it reminds me of a story that the author had, um, had told a magazine, Sacramento Magazine, because he was a professor here at Sac State. And he said, when I was four years old, I told a lie. How many of you have ever told a lie to your parents? And it was kind of a lesson for him. And he said, he drew on the wall at home. He drew a W, a letter W, and his father said, did you do that? And he said, no, I did not. So he went and asked him and his sibling to write on a piece of paper the letter W. <laughs> and it was very apparent who had done it. His father was upset that he lied, but he kind of smiled a little bit thinking, maybe I have a little artist in my hands. And so when I see the lines that he drew and the care that he took to illustrate or to show his father, I think about that. But he also did something else here with color and shading. There's kind of a, a brightness that comes from this painting. It's, um, perhaps we can see up here in this upper corner where his mouth comes up to the upper right corner there. You see maybe a little bit of haze that comes up and then it, it shows color a little bit higher up there. Uh, where the transition is between the mouth and the, and the pattern that you see here. Yes, and this pattern has color. And, you know, something about that um, is very specific. And the artist said that there are, the light is showing rays of sun breaking through storm clouds. So there's this, this sense of breaking free. And so what the artist did was he used this vine and leaf pattern, an overlay of wallpaper with the color that is bringing in this transformation for his father. And one of the things he said that he wanted to accomplish about this was that he, um, he felt that sometimes you know you love your parents as a child, but that love transforms when you, go, when you grow up. And so this is that transformation of that he knew as a child, of course he loved his father, but that appreciation of your parents as an adult is what he had illustrated here. So I'm going to go ahead and have Catherine come and bring her thoughts to you. All right, well, we're gonna continue looking at Portrait of My Father, and we're gonna talk about a couple of artistic terms. And the first one is photorealism. So like when you take a picture with your, with your iPhone, what you have is a realistic image, right? You take a picture of somebody and there it is. It's realistic. And it's a photo. It's photorealism. Well, when Kaltenbach decided to paint his father, he lived in New York and he was not doing very realistic things. And at a certain point he decided, I'm going to move away from New York, the biggest city in America, I'm going to move back to California, and I'm going to live near Sacramento. And where he actually painted this painting was outside of Woodland. So maybe 20 miles from where you live is where, is where he painted this painting. And what he wanted was when you looked at it from a distance, like when you walk into the gallery and you look at this painting, what you see is the portrait of his father. But as you walk closer and closer and closer, he wanted it to become abstract. So if you look up in this upper corner here, 
you can see the pattern right up here in the upper corner. You see a pattern of arabesques, and that's, that's, uh, that's, that's from, it's, it's Islamic. And you can see it right there, right up in there. And you can see how some of the curves of the pattern go right into his mustache and into his beard. It all curves around. And the artist said, when you walk in, I want you to see something realistic. When you get close, and we don't want to ever get too close to the art <laughs> because we have to keep our distance, but when I get even this close, you can see, I, I, I would not know that it was a portrait of a man standing here. I would have to stand back. And that's why when you come to the museum, it's good to sit on the bench because you can see both that way. So as you look, and up here in the upper, in this corner, you see some of the light that Joanne was talking about, and you see even more of the pattern. Now, an interesting thing, or you might find it interesting, is it took the artist seven years to create this painting. And he rented an unheated barn near Woodland, and he put this enormous canvas up, and he started working on it. And he took, put things in, and he took things out, and he made many, many different decisions about this until he came to this point. And I don't say when he finished the painting, and here's why. When this painting was first hung at the Oakland Art Museum, Stephen Kaltenbach was there with his, with his paintbrush making a few last changes. So it brings up something that you might want to think about. When is something actually finished? When is it finished, or how long do we keep working on it? And if it's your own created work of art, it's kind of up to you, isn't it? And um, I've been told that he's even made a few changes right here in the crocker. And it's his painting, so he can come in and do that if he wants. So for my little part of your interaction with Portrait of My Father, what I want you to think about is what's realistic, and what's abstract? And abstract is when we look at it and we see maybe patterns or lines. And now Jim is going to talk a little bit about the artist's intent. Thank you both. So from Joanne, we got a wonderful picture on what the artist was like growing up and the development, or the relationship rather, that he had with his father and his family. And then from Catherine, we learn what the artist intends you to see uh, when you come in here. But what did he feel? Well, actually, uh, we don't have a whole lot of information on what he felt. I, maybe it's because he just doesn't want to express his feelings or he just wants it to leave it up to you. So I'm going to suggest maybe some things that I feel, maybe put in the chat things that you feel. I'd love to hear about that. Maybe I'll invite my classmates to share some things that they feel. So one of the things that Catherine touched on is how some of the arabesques and magical, it, see this, it's, it's a combination, as she said, it's photorealistic, but then it's a little bit more. There's some magic here. So for example, these little bright spots stuck in the man's beard. I, I look at it, it's almost like stardust stuck in his beard. Now that doesn't normally happen. So why would that be there? Well, some have suggested that, well, I'm gonna back up a little bit. Think about um, people in your life that you love and that maybe you've, that some people that you love are no longer here. And this is what was happening when Kaltenbach painted this because his father was dying. Uh, think about people that you love now and you realize, you know, in many years, you may, they may no longer be in your life, which is sad. But then there's also that love that continues on. And that is what is, this painting is about. So this is about the tribute to his father. Maybe some grief in there too, but this painting is showing or suggesting to show perhaps the real life face, which is like the photorealism, but then maybe things are starting to shift. Maybe he's leaving us. Maybe he's going on to a more magical place. I get a little choked up thinking about it. 
a beautiful place. And that's what some of these patterns are talking about and what the little stardust is talking about. So I'd love to hear what you think. What are your emotions when you see something like this? Imagine someone you love. Imagine someone that you wish they were here. Well, it's such an interesting question. And, and certainly, it, it, when Jim brought this up, it reminded me, the first time I wa was in the Crocker, Crocker at all, this was the painting that just blew me away. I walked around the corner. I saw it. I didn't burst into tears or anything. My mouth just kind of dropped open. And I've been to a lot of museums. And I sat down on the bench, and I just looked at it. And I thought, this is amazing. And I didn't even, I didn't even think about it much. I was just overwhelmed by what an amazing painting it was. Now, of course, over time, what I said earlier, I have come back and seen this painting literally dozens of times. And each time, I notice something new. And, and it becomes a little bit more meaningful, but also I just notice more about the painting itself. And you'll find that that's true of great art, whether it's something you read, whether it's poetry, or whether it's, it's art like this. It doesn't get old. You can come back and visit it lots of times, mm -hmm. and it will continue to tell you new things, and you will have a different interaction with it. So that was my experience mm -hmm. with portrait uh, of my father. Joanne? So I kind of actually had a different reaction <laughs> when I first saw it. Um, well, I had never seen it before until I walked into the museum after our training. We, had, we were shown it a few times online, right? So when I walked in, yeah, clearly the scale is large. But there was an old man staring at me, or staring out, and it was kind of like, I don't know if I'm comfortable. I don't know if this is okay. Um, so actually, after doing our research and into this, you know, into this piece with you, um, I grew an appreciation for it. It didn't seem to me like an old, just an old man. It, it wasn't at face value. Yes, it is an old man, but it's not the old man that I'm thinking about when I see him anymore. I'm thinking about the color, the light. I'm thinking about the shade and the contrast, and I'm thinking about the meaning. It's bits and pieces of what Jim had shared, and it actually allowed me to have a light feeling about it versus a heavy feeling mm -hmm. when I first saw it. And I, of course, think of my father, whom I love very much and wish he was still here and meet you and be in this museum with us. And, but every time I see this painting, I think of him. Every time I go to a beautiful place and wish he could share it with me, I think of him. So I hope you have such beautiful memories of people you love and will always love in the future with you. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming and being with us today. And we, I know that I speak for all three of us when I say we really hope that we see you right here in the Crocker, in the galleries. Thank you. Or online. Bye. Bye.
your mask. Good afternoon. Welcome to Gallery Bites here at Crocker Museum. I am among three, with, with three people, with two people here today, excuse me, I, we're three people who are among the over, or nearly two dozen uh, people in the, um, the newest class of docents here at the Crocker Museum. We, in, uh, beginning in October, we're going to be joining the large voluntary pool of docents already at the Crocker who serve as your guides to the museum's permanent collection and various ex um, visiting exhibitions. So my name is Jim, my pronouns are he, him, and his, and I am here with my classmates, Catherine and Joanne. She, her, hers. Yes, and thank you. And uh, so first we're going to spend a few minutes talking about uh, why we chose to be docents, each of us, and what our experience through the training program was like. Uh, so we encourage you to uh, write in any questions in the chat if you should have about what we're talking about today. And so with that, I'm going to invite Joanna to join us and kick us off first. Hi there, I'm Catherine. I'm also um, a new docent here at the Crocker, and my path was a little bit different than Joanne's. I was already a docent at the San Francisco Fine Arts Museum, and I loved the training, and I loved being a docent, and I loved it so much that with the pandemic, I thought, wouldn't it be great 
my initial idea was, wouldn't it be great to learn a lot more about the art of the crocker? So that was my, my first motivation. My second motivation, which was more than satisfied, was my own personal belief that experiences at a museum are about the people coming to the museum, not about the docent telling them everything that, that I have in my head. Hopefully, as a guide, I will know about whatever art we're looking at, but you, the visitor, will be having your own authentic experience with it. And that, that was my, my hope, and it was more than fulfilled by the training. Though we did the training online, it was fascinating. We did it on, in the evening, so there was the ability for, for people from many different walks of life to participate. There was, um, there was good diversity in the docent core. I know that's a buzzword, but uh, it is super important, especially here in Sacramento, one of the most diverse cities in the United States. And my own feeling is that the museum is for everybody, and it should be for everybody in Sacramento. I live relatively far away, and I love coming to this museum. Um, also, just as a person, I like to push myself a little bit outside of my comfort zone. And certainly when you do docent training, you do that because you do do assignments, and you are judged. And for many of us, it's been a long time since somebody said, oh, you know, you could do that a little bit better. You think, but wait, I'm an adult. I, I do things better now. And I, but I like that experience because um, that feeling of discomfort is actually the feeling of growing. And on a more superficial level, we just did this same program, a little bit different for children. But as I told the children, it's really fun coming to the museum on the day it's closed. It's fun being in a gallery all by yourself. And of course, best of all, coming in through the loading dock with your badge. Sorry, I really like it. Okay, and last but not least, Jim. Thank you. So I used to be an architect, and more recently I was a graphic designer. I retired from that, and so obviously I'm a very visual person. And so of course when I uh, entered my retirement, I wanted to uh, get into a visual artistic pursuit of some sort of vocation. Well, we were visiting a friend uh, last summer, you know who you are, and lo and behold, she's a docent here at the Crocker, and she said, oh, yes, and they're looking for more docents. Yes. <laughs> so I got accepted into the training program, <laughs> and so here I am, I made it through, yes. Um, so, it, and the whole experience has just been wonderful. Um, it, one thing I love about the training program here at the Crocker is that we're emphasizing that your experience as a visitor matters. Your emotions matter, your reactions matter. You don't have to know what the artist intended. There's no wrong answer. Your reaction, your memories matter. And so we are here now as guides with all the existing pool of docents here uh, to help um, layer in, I want to layer in what uh, the artist intended and see, well, does that shift what you think? Just add, add to it. And I'm looking forward to doing more uh, tours um, that we've already had. We've actually been shadowing some of the existing docents and um, building on the experience of art because again it's what the docent knows it's what you know and we share that together during our tours and really makes it a wonderful experience those 50 minutes go by like that okay so now we're going to talk about the painting behind us this is portrait of my father painted by stephen j uh stephen kaltenbach i'm not sure if his middle initial is j <laughs> and it took him seven years to paint this. And we want to give you, it's hard to see on camera just how big this is. As Joanne has said, this is about the size of a double garage door. Nine and a half feet tall, a little over 14 feet wide. It is massive. So that makes quite an impression. And I'm going to let me and my classmates are going to give you more information about aspects of this painting now. So let's start with Joanne. Thanks, Jim. So we are going to start from the beginning with this, and we are going to just say, you know, what do we see? That's usually the, the first question we go through as docents is say, 
what do you see? So let's take a look and see what we see together. If you have some ideas on a part as part of this conversation as uh, the three of us go through this with you, please go ahead, put it in the chat. We would love to have a dialogue, so uh, the more the merrier. So we clearly see a person, right? Uh, there is a person here, um, an old man, I would say. Um, but what might be what might be going on here? What is it that we see? Is he sitting? No, it doesn't look like he's sitting. It looks like he might be lying down. Um, so the 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 artist father, so this is a portrait of his, of my father, uh, actually had a series of strokes that caused him to be bedridden and his health was failing. And his, um, the artist was born in 1940 and he did this uh, between 1972 and 1979. It took him seven years, right? And um, so he was probably around 32 um, when he did this. So his father was ill a picture from his sister to kind of give him an update of you know how he was doing and um, he decided he was going to draw a portrait and when we look at it at whole we see, we see his father perhaps in a bed and when we get a little bit closer you start seeing a bit more you see more details so let's take a look here um, in this upper corner where his forehead is there's a lot going on where you see kind of his forehead. You see some more lines. Lines throughout here are kind of like a, a silvery, gray, some white. It's making up his hair, his beard, and his brow, right? So his brow. There's a lot of highlights. And then on his forehead, you see those lines, thick lines, thicker lines, deep lines, wrinkle lines. So as a parent, have you ever worried about your kids uh, or your parents or siblings? When I think about his father, I think about maybe what could have caused those lines, what could have made him worry, uh, was, would my son be a successful artist, perhaps? <laughs> would go with that starving artist be? But there's some light happening. Light is coming through this painting. When you're here in the museum, you'll get a better sense of it, because you'll, you'll feel it. There's something about art when you're in the presence of it, the physical aspect of art. We get this from this piece. There's also color that's happening here. In that same area, over his face and over his head throughout, you see this pattern. The line is not random anymore and it's not thin, but the lines are colored and it's like a, a pattern. It's um, what the artist has called a line and leaf wallpaper almost that goes right over his father's face. It's bringing a sense of perhaps, you know, what do you feel? What do you feel when you, when you see it? Do you feel sadness? Do you feel hope? One of the things the, uh, the artist wanted to convey was the, you know, the celebration of, of the human bond. And this is the bond that he had with his father. And it's, 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 um, it's kind. When I see the soft colors of the pastels, the colors you see, there's probably only three colors here, green, a pink, and kind of a golden orange color. Very soft, very luminous. And that light is carried over almost like an arc. One of the things the author has said is that the light coming through are like rays of sun breaking through storm clouds. And when we see that over here, almost like a breath coming out of his mouth. Do you see that? Almost like that lightness of a breath coming out of his mouth, and that, 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 uh, that uh, those lines of, of white. Um, 
it seems very, very almost mystical to me, spiritual. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer this over to Catherine. Well, yes, and I think I'll pick up right where she left off. Um, what, what was Kaltenberg up to with this? Well, we, we only know from what he had to say, but he was living in New York. He was very successful and in, ver in using very, very different kinds of art than what you see right here. And at a certain point, he decided, and I'm going to just make this short for you, he decided he was going to come back to California. He was going to leave the biggest art city in the United States and possibly the world. And he was going to come back to California and be a regional artist. And he was going to settle not in San Francisco or Los Angeles, but in Sacramento. And ultimately, he rented a barn near Woodland, maybe about 20 miles from where we are right now, a big unheated barn. He put up this enormous canvas and he started the painting and it took him seven years. And it's a question whether, whether it's finished or not because when it was first hung at the um, Oakland Museum of Art, he was there in the museum with his paintbrush adding a few things to it. So the painting may or may not be finished, but what we have is right here. The artist himself has said what he wanted, and I'm going to read this quote because his words are better than mine. From 150 feet away, I would like to have it look like a photorealist painting in a way, almost completely, except maybe a little vibratings. And then, as you get closer, I'd like to have it break down more and more until you are right next to it and it becomes totally abstract. So you've got both. When you come in to this gallery and you see this painting, it does look like a photograph. It looks like a photograph of a man. As you come closer, if you look up in the corner here, if we can, um, Houghton, if we could maybe go close up here just briefly. When you look up in the corner, it's completely abstract and it's covered in an Islamic pattern of arabesques. And I think you can see them there. And they're in light pastel colors and they, they overlay the, um, the actual, the actual portrait of his father. So it, it does bring an element of spirituality to this painting. And I have one other quote, and this is my last quote. And this was written by a curator of this um, painting, Lawrence um, Rinder. And he said, we have an overlay of spectral filigree which suggests the existence of a deeper reality, a level of less being differentiated by you and I, or even life and death, the experience of being as pure pattern and light, common to mystic traditions throughout the world and across time. Now, some of this too, the artist was, in some of this too, I'm back, was inspired by the artist's experience um, using with, with drugs where he had seen light patterns. Obviously, this was, this was not the most central thing to him, but it was an aspect of how he moved into using the photorealism and then the abstraction as well. So Jim now is going to talk a little about some other aspects of this painting. Thank you, Catherine. So we uh, have heard about how the artist intended you to see this painting, both from the distance and close up. We heard somewhat about uh, what the artist, why, they, why he, he created it. Um, certainly it was about his father, obviously. But let's dive into that a little bit more. What is the spirituality? What is the feeling behind this? Well, this, the artist hasn't given us a whole lot of information. Maybe he just uh, is not that kind of guy who shares that information. So we can guess or we can talk about what our own feelings are. Please bring up in the chat, what are your feelings? We'd love to hear. And what are your memories? So uh, for me, certainly this makes me feel, think about my father. I was a little bit younger when I lost my father than when Mr. Kaltenbach lost his. But like Kaltenbach, I love my father and I miss him very much and think of him every time I see this painting and perhaps you think of someone you love when you see this painting. But also, there's remember that vibration that uh, Catherine brought up? Well, that's this arabesque, 
And what I like to call it, just a little bit of magic. It's like the regular photorealistic image, but with a little bit of magic. I love this, these little light here, which I think of is like uh, stardust being caught in his beard. And some have said that that represents kind of the moment when, as some a poet might say, as his father is shifting the mortal coil, that he's passing from the not so abstract real life into some very abstract different place that we hope is as beautiful as what the arabesques represent. And so there's that love, there's that tribute, there's a sadness too, there's that complexity. So we'd love to hear what you think, and until then, I'd love to hear what my classmates think about it too. Oh, Joanna's having her microphone worked on, but let's hear from you first, Kathy. <laughs> All right, <laughs> you've just heard from me, but you're going to hear from me, I guess, a little bit more. Um, I've got to say this is one of my favorite works in the Crocker Art Gallery, and the first time I visited this particular gallery, I walked in and I was just amazed. And I didn't even really know what I felt. I just sat down on the bench, which as it turns out is a nice distance between being 150 feet away and being really, really close. You get, you get a sense of both the abstraction and the photorealism. And I just looked at it, and I've come back time and time again. Every time I come to the Crocker, I make it a point to come and look at this artwork. And each time I come, I get something more out of it. And I think that's true for all of us that love art and all of us that visit museums. We realize that um, the art doesn't get old. It's not like a movie where you just say, oh, you know, I saw that movie. I don't need to see it again. It's like, I saw that artwork, and every time I see it, I get something more out of it. And I certainly find it true with this artwork. And having the opportunity to do a lot of research on it for, for this little gallery bites, um, we used a minuscule amount of, of what we figured out, but it has made the experience even deeper for me. I am totally, that resonates so much with me, Catherine, because um, I did not care for this piece when I first saw it. And I think that it, um, it takes a person aback. I mean, for me, it took me aback. And I have to be honest, it probably, because I think one thing that um, my friends here had said was that when you look at a piece, you bring your own baggage. You do. You bring your own frame of reference. You bring your perspective. And I guess I had baggage. And um, I, uh, I had lost my father um, 13 years ago. And um, well, I saw that and I thought, I remember that time, you know? And it actually didn't like click really well with me until just now. Can you believe it? It just happened like just now, right in front of you. <laughs> and, um, and I thought to myself, that's why I didn't like it. That's why it did not hit me. And just like when I was going through the motions with you about the light and how the process of when um, the art showed the, the luminescence and how that softness played into this moment, it reminded me of that. And then also it reminded me of something the artist had said too about, you know, um, a love of a parent you know, a ch for a child is different over time. That love transforms, it evolves. And I, I resonated with that and that, that's what's come to me. And so, yes, Catherine, it's different every time and there's, you're always learning. And I just had that moment too, <laughs> Boom, just came off. But, um, but yeah, so thank you. Um, and yeah, do you have anything additional to share? Well, this is the power of art. <laughs> <laughs> it's the power of art. And I'm hoping that um, what we shared with you today, uh, whether it was um, being part of the docent training program or welcoming you in to the Crocker today uh, with this piece um, in the museum, has helped you um, feel like a part of the community because um, we are, we're, we're part of the Sacramento community and we love um, having visitors and we hope you could come in. And if you can't, we are gonna continue to do these gallery bites. And um, we also have uh, virtual uh, platforms for classrooms and adults. 
Thank you so much for coming and, and being with us today. This has been fantastic. We look forward to seeing you. See you soon. Bye-bye.